Well, hello and welcome back to my study. Here's a question for you. Do you think God is angry with the entire world? Do you think God is angry with the entire world? What's the evidence for and against that? Have a think, hit pause and have a think about that. Well, I don't know what you thought about there, but uh, um, you might have thought about coronavirus. Is that evidence for God being angry with the whole world? Natural disasters. Think about those fires back in Australia this time last year. Uh, maybe uh, think about earthquakes and all sorts of different horrible things that happen around the world. Uh, you could think about uh, uh, how nasty people can be. Is that a sign of God's anger on the whole world? Is it a justification for God's anger? Or, or you might think about uh, uh, wars. And uh, there's another one just kicking off by the sound of it in uh, Ethiopia, isn't there? Uh, is God angry with the whole world? Or you might think God can't be angry with everybody, surely. That, that would make him out to be a tyrant, a nasty piece of work, wouldn't it? He can't be angry with everyone. Let me take you to a verse in uh, Isaiah. It's uh, chapter 14, verse 26. Listen to what God says here. This is the plan determined for the whole world. This, uh, th this is the hand stretched out over all nations. And that comes in the context of, of Isaiah describing God's uh, God's great judgment on the whole world. And then uh, Isaiah, is, I think, is aware of the question, but that's not fair, is it? Surely it can't be fair for God's hand to be stretched out across the whole world. Surely not. But then Isaiah goes on in, in the next few chapters to justify why God is angry with the whole world. Uh, so... Uh, here's, here's one reason. Uh, chapter 13, verse 9. See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger to make the land desolate uh, and destroy the sinners within it. You see, everyone's a sinner. Everyone's a sinner. And God is rightly angry with sin. Sin is rebellion against him. Uh, here's another one. 14, verse 5. In anger, uh, the uh, the Babylonians struck down peoples with unceasing blows and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggression. We see that around the world now, don't we? Uh, relentless aggression, one nation against another, one person against another, one tribe against another, one family against another. We see relentless aggression, don't we? Uh, then uh, uh, God, uh, Isaiah points out to the other nations around Judah and shows that each one of them, nations like the Philistines, nations like uh, Egypt, nations like Cush and, uh, and Edom, all of them are filled with, with sinners. And it's the same today, isn't it? All of them are filled with sinners. The whole world is under God's wrath. And, and God, God has promised something. Chapter, Acts chapter 17, verse 31 says this. God has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed, that's Jesus. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. God is hang angry with everybody who, uh, who refuses to come to him in repentance and faith. God is angry with the world. God is angry and rightly angry. But that last line in Acts chapter seventeen thirty one, He has given proof of this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. It gives us hope, doesn't it? It gives us hope that there is something beyond God's anger. And you see, God's anger isn't there in order to uh, just make us tremble 
uh, at the thought of him being angry, although we should absolutely tremble at the thought of God being angry. We should have a healthy fear of the Lord. But God's anger should send us to God himself for protection. Where's the safest place in in a hurricane? It's the eye of the storm, isn't it? If you, if, if you could find a place, if you, if you could find the, the eye of the storm and, and move around with it, you'll be safe until the hurricane died out. It's the same with God's anger. If you could find a place where God's anger swirls around you, but doesn't touch you because you're protected, then that would be the place to be, wouldn't it? And that place is with the Lord Jesus. Because when he died on the cross, he took God's, God's anger, the full force of it, on himself. And then God raised him up as Lord and judge of all. So that uh, God's anger is turned away from us. It is, it's, it's soaked up by Jesus when we trust in Jesus. Praise God for that. Because God's the day of God's wrath will be an awful day. It'll be a day when there's no turning back to him anymore, unless you've already done that. Praise God if you're a believer, if you're someone trusting in Jesus, because you are absolutely safe. You see, God, it, it, God is the safest person to be with, because only he can protect us from his own anger. And his anger is settled and it's righteous and it is right. It's fair for God to be angry. We'll cover the more of that on, on Sunday. So do tune in uh, on, on Sunday uh, to hear what we have to think about uh, uh, about God's anger. But we won't leave it at God's anger, don't worry. We'll, we'll talk about uh, lots of other things too. But to see the justification for God's anger, tune on Sunday. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you that uh, we uh, have been warned about your anger, that we can uh, come to you knowing that you are the safest place to be because you are the one who in Jesus ha has taken upon, uh, has taken away your anger from us. The Lord Jesus has taken it upon himself in our place. We pray, Father, that we would praise him for that. In his name. Amen. See you soon.